Good morning, friends, and welcome to another Wellness Wednesday. It's a little nippy out here. I was very tempted to go inside, but really wanted to be on the porch for this video. So I have my blanket down here keeping me nice and snuggled up. Okay, so getting into the topic of the video from the title, you know that I'm going to be talking a little bit about this and my experience thus far with it. But first I wanted to lay the groundwork by chatting a little bit going off of last week about my baseline diet versus a weight loss diet. And I did a video about this um, quite a while back, something like um, a healthy diet versus a weight loss diet and how a lot of times they can be two different things. So for me, I'm in the point of my health journey where I've healed a lot of metabolic issues. My body's in a pretty healthy state. And just going to a healthy diet, um, a diet that makes my body feel good, a diet that is generally healthy for me, does not necessarily correspond to weight loss. I like what um, Dr. Barry says, where uh, keto is not necessarily a weight loss diet, and I absolutely agree with that. It is a health promoting diet. And for lots and lots of people, especially when they're coming from like a standard American diet that have all kinds of metabolic issues, just that step of moving to a healthy diet results in weight loss. But those of you that have worked on your diet and have gotten to a point of you know good health with your diet, uh, like I have, oftentimes you'll come to the point where the weight loss doesn't correspond with the healthiness of the diet. Lots of times people will hit stalls, um, just not be able to lose those last few pounds that they really wanna lose. A lot of times it's just vanity weight, Although sometimes it's not, sometimes people, you know, have metabolic damage where their body just doesn't want to let go of the weight, even though the diet is super healthy. And, but then there's also people on the other side who go on a healthy diet, like a keto diet or whatever it is that they find is healthiest for their body. And just going on that healthy diet, um, changing the kinds of food that they eat results in them getting all the way down to whatever, you know, goal weight or ideal weight that they want to be. And I find that typically those are the people who say things like calories don't matter. And that really reflects their journey and their experience. I wish I was one who could just, you know, eat healthy foods and get to an ideal body weight. But a lot of us, you know, have underlying issues and a lifetime of eating things that are less than ideal. And it takes a little bit more than just getting a healthy diet nailed down in order to lose weight. So like I told you a couple weeks ago, I am currently out of weight loss mode. And for me, that doesn't mean I throw in the towel on all of my healthy eating. It means I go back to my baseline healthy diet that is really, really good for me and makes me feel well, makes me feel healthy, but doesn't necessarily allow me to lose weight. I have found for me up to this point that if I really want to lose body fat, I have to make some pretty specific tweaks in order to get my calories a little bit lower and specifically my fat calories a little bit lower. Keeping my protein up is really important for me to stay healthy. Um, but if I want to lose the body fat, I have to knock down the dietary fat a little bit, not a ton, not every day, but I do find that I need to make room for my body to burn my own body fat. Otherwise it'll be just perfectly happy living on the fat that I'm eating and doesn't bother touching my body fat. Over the past several months, I've gone in and out of weight loss mode, times where I'm trying to reduce fat and reduce calories and it's worked out great. I've lost 15 pounds and I'm maintaining that weight loss fairly effortlessly doing my healthy baseline diet. And I am not planning to go back into weight loss mode anytime soon. But just because I'm not going into weight loss mode, which for me means a reduction of fat and calories, doesn't mean that I'm not gonna keep experimenting with the kinds of food I eat on my baseline diet. So I'm gonna chat a little bit in this video about some experiments that I'm thinking about and one that I am starting, but I wanna make it clear that I'm not gonna be um, reducing my calories in these experiments. These experiments are strictly 
switching up the kinds of food I'm eating, cutting out certain things, maybe adding certain things. And one thing that made me even more want to do these little experiments is that I have something else to test with. I am going to be using my new tone device, which I will talk about if you guys don't even know what this is, I will talk about what it is exactly. You guys know me and you know that I love to experiment both in the kitchen with recipes and with my diet, and I am going to continue on that journey. All right, so now let's talk about this and what it is and how I'm gonna be using it in my experimentation going forward. So this is a tone device and it's by a ketogenic girl. You can see that there. I'm sure everybody watching this knows who that is. Vanessa Spina. She has blog. She has podcast, which is now called the optimal protein podcast, which I love that shift that she's made um, from just being ketogenic to focusing on optimal protein. I've learned tons from listening to her podcast. She has all kinds of great um, experts and lots of stuff, lots of information about protein, especially highly, highly recommend um, giving that podcast a listen. And she released this product. Um, it's been a few months ago, a couple months ago, I think at the beginning of the year. And I went back and forth, first of all, of if I wanted to even purchase it, because I'm a firm believer in not needing lots of gadgets and gizmos and products and testing and you can do a lot, like I talk about all the time, with just your body's feedback. I talk about listening to my hunger and my cravings and my energy and like getting feedback from my body, which that is like the number one feedback that you should be listening to. But things are fun, gadgets are fun, and you can get interesting information through different kinds of testing. We get, you know, information through blood testing, whether it be through a doctor or, you know, testing your blood sugar, different things like that can be really valuable. And it can also be fun if you like experimenting with things like I do. So after going back and forth for several weeks, I was like, all right, I'm just gonna go ahead and purchase this. So I did purchase this device. It was not sent to me for free. Then after I purchased it and I've used it for a little while, I've gone back and forth on if I even wanted to talk about it on my channel, just because I don't want to give the impression that you need something like this in order to be successful. Like I said, I'm a firm believer in this way of life being simple and that you just don't need all of these things. They're not necessary. So as I talk about this, I don't want you to feel like you have to rush out and purchase this. I don't wanna communicate that any of my success that I've had is because of this. Honestly, the weight that I lost at the end of last year, I, I didn't have anything like this. I just went on my own body's feedback and I'll talk about my experience with this, but really it hasn't been a key for me to you know move forward yet <laughs> but that's part of the reason why i want to experiment with it because it is interesting so basically what the tone device is is a breath ketone meter so it measures the acetone on your breath and can tell you um how much fat you're utilizing in your metabolism that's a very basic explanation. And I will link more information down below if you're curious in more. Vanessa, of course, has all kinds of information and, and she explains it really well. So it is similar to like testing your blood ketones. That's something that is more common. Although um, from the information that Vanessa has been putting out and that I've been listening to, um, it's really interesting how when you use blood ketones as a marker, it can after a while when you're in ketosis, or if you've been on keto for a while, it can be less accurate because your body gets really good at burning ketones. And so you're actually using the ketones for fuel. And so you don't see it reflected in your blood test strip. But with the breath ketones, it's actually a little bit different. And um, the breath ketones don't seem to have that kind of dip after you've been in ketosis for a while. So it's more accurate for the long-term keto people. So that was very interesting. And then the fact that you don't have to buy test strips at all, it's just a breath monitor. So all you have to do is blow into it. It's a one-time purchase. Um, that was really attractive to me. So because of all those things, that's why I decided to take the plunge. But um, I'll do a little demonstration real quick. It's very, 
it's very simple little device. It has a cap here, and this is where you blow into it. There's a uh, power button on the side. Hold that down until it turns on. And then, um, is it the right way? No, it's not. And then it has a 20 second countdown. So every time you turn it on, it has to warm up for about 20 seconds. And um, then you blow into it for, I think, five or six seconds. And then it will give you your number. So it's almost ready. Five seconds, four, three, All right, so my number is 10, and I forget how high the numbers can go up. I think it's like 40, maybe 50. And the breath ketones and blood ketones don't perfectly correlate as far as numbers. There's like a lag time between the two, but you can roughly guesstimate that a 10 on here would be the same as a 1.0 millimolar on a blood ketone test. So if you see like a 15 on here, it would be equivalent to a 1.5 millimolar. If you see like a 32 on here, it would be roughly equivalent to a 3.2 millimolar on a blood ketone monitor. So basically on her chart and her information, she says um, anything from one to 10 on the meter is light fat burning mode and anything above 10 is fat burning mode. So I have been using this for the past several weeks. I forget when it came. I think it came sometime in February. So I've been using it for over a month now and I've just been using it randomly, checking, just kind of getting a feel for where my numbers are. And what I have found is that I am almost always in between eight and about 12. Uh, occasionally I will see a little bit higher than that, um, up to like, uh, 19 was the highest I've ever seen. Um, but it's just very rarely I'll be like 15, 17. And the one time I was 19. Um, but I'm almost always in that 10, 11 range. So with the diet that I've been eating, it shows that I am in light to regular fat burning mode all of the time, basically. And I've been like, every time I have something and I'm like, oh, I wonder if that, you know, is gonna affect it. Nothing seems to affect it. Even when I ate ice cream on my daughter's birthday um, a couple of weeks ago, I was like, oh, for sure. And it was kind of like this experiment, like, oh, this is definitely, I'm definitely gonna see like a two or a zero, you know, on the meter. But I didn't. I It was always consistently in that 10 or 11, 12-ish range. So I now, since I'm, you know, kind of finished with the weight loss mode thing, I'm not reducing my calories, focusing on lean days, anything like that. I thought I would start playing with my tone device and seeing what changes I can make to my diet that will give me different numbers. <laughs> I'm just curious to... Um, see what different foods and cutting out different foods does to the numbers without changing. Um, I'm not going to say without changing calories because that could be incidental. I'm going to say without um, restricting my food, without being hungry. I'm going to eat, continue to eat to hunger. I could eat more um, if I'm eating to hunger. I could eat less if I'm eating to hunger. I don't really, I'm not really going to keep track of that but I'm gonna to eat to hunger. I'm just gonna choose different kinds of foods um, for experimental purposes and see if I can get the number on this thing to go higher. I heard Vanessa say in one of her recent podcasts that she feels the best when um, she, I think she said when she's in the 20s of her numbers and I've never been in the 20s. So I'm really curious to see if I can get the number up first of all and if I do, what that means, you know, for how I feel. So I have a few different ideas of things I want to try out. I'm going to try out um, no sweeteners at some point. Um, I don't eat a lot of sweet things. The main sweet thing that I have is my electrolyte drink. Uh, so I might go like a week with <laughs> unflavored electrolytes, which is so sad. But um, I'm, you know, for science, I might try that. Um, and then also cutting things out like the allulose that's in the bread just cutting out all sweeteners uh, for a period of time and seeing if that does anything to my number. Again, not reducing calories because I think you could get a lot higher number if you're starving 
and obviously you're burning lots of fat on your body if you're, you know, not eating, but I'm going to try to see if I can affect the number on this without starving and without being hungry. So no sweeteners, probably some point in the future. And I'm thinking since I have this, you know, easy direct feedback, I'll just plan on doing a week long uh, test for each thing. And then I can assess at like the end of the week if I want to continue or whatever, based on, you know, what numbers I get and how I feel and all of that. The other thing that I want to test, which actually I'm starting today, so you'll hear more about it next week when I have finished a week, is I want to try the BBBE diet or cleanse or whatever it is. It's not necessarily meant to be a forever thing. Um, it's It was coined by Dr. Barry, and it's just a way to get back to the basics. It's a very basic carnivore diet, which I love to do kind of as a cleanse, kind of the way I used to use Whole30. I like to use carnivore. It just gets me back to basics. And um, I've never done the BBBE specifically, but I was really curious if I do that for a week, um, what the numbers on here will look like. And then of course, how I feel. So that is what I'm starting today. And um, just as some details of how I'm doing it, um, I, I'm i still having coffee, so we could call it the BBBEC cleanse, <laughs> but I am giving up my dairy-free creamer for the week, which that's the hardest part for me. Um, eating steak and burgers and eggs, that's no big deal, but giving up the dairy-free creamer is difficult, but I can do it for a week. Any, I can do anything for a week. Um, so what I'm doing in my coffee instead of the dairy-free creamer is I'm going to use some butter powder. That's what I had this morning. It's not as good as my dairy-free creamer, but it was fine. So I think I'm going to manage. I'm also going to play with um, doing some egg in my coffee. Egg coffee is a thing, which I have tried before and I don't love. Um, but I might try a little bit of butter powder with a whole... Uh, not not a whole egg, uh, just an egg yolk. I don't think I like the white in the coffee. I think that was my problem. So I'm going to try a little bit with yolk and maybe some butter powder. I don't mind doing like butter in there, like a bulletproof type coffee, just putting butter in and uh, mixing that in. But I think I like the butter powder a little bit better um, because it's not as much of an oil slick. <laughs> I don't like an oil slick in my coffee. Um, that's why I never liked the MCT oil like pow uh, not the powder, the regular MCT oil in my coffee. I found I love the powder that's in my dairy-free creamer, but regular butter, regular MCT oil, I just didn't care for. But I will attempt some combinations with like the egg yolk and the butter powder and the regular butter and find something that is manageable. But so far the butter powder is pretty good. So anyways, I don't want to get too much into that experiment right now because I'm planning on that being what I talk about next week because I will have more information. I'm basically just testing my um, ketone, breath ketones in the morning, first thing when I wake up and then before bed. And those are what I'm like writing down and keeping uh, track of because that's kind of the best way to get an idea of where you're at. But also whenever I feel like it, since I don't have to use test strips or anything, um, I just, you know, use this to kind of see where I'm at. And I'm really curious to see if these different food choices will make any difference here. And if they do make any difference here, if they'll make any difference in how I feel. So that is what I am playing with. Let me know if you have one of these um, and what you have found using it. I will put a link down below to where you can find info about this. And again, I just want to reiterate, this diet can be very simple and you do not need tools and gadgets and gizmos like this. It is not necessary. And up to this point, this has not helped me in any way achieve the weight loss that I have achieved in the last six months. It has purely been interesting information and I hope that me sharing my experiments with it um, will just be interesting for you guys, but um, it's only for those who are into this kind of thing and who like the experimentation. It is absolutely not necessary in order to do well on any kind of a diet. So that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in another video.